This is a video for administrators or technicians to help, to help understand web links that have what we call dependencies or site dependencies and our predefined web link feature. And this will help assist teachers in a certain situation that I'll describe here. So a teacher may create a web link for a site that they want to visit. So let's use the ck12.org website as an example. So they create their web link as usual. And then when they're in a class, they can, we'll just push it out to this one student. I have the student's device mirrored down here for uh, larger uh, view access uh, using uh, uh, just casting it. And I'll go ahead and push this URL out that we just created. So as you can see, it opens the tab, um, it goes to the website, everything looks normal, uh, looks normal down here. So that's all fine. That always works fine when you're just pushing a URL. But let's suppose now the teacher wants to lock the student uh, to that website. So they're going to use it with site lock instead of push URL. And this is where, the, where this, this issue will come into play. So let's do site lock and we do ck12.org. I'll even say allow the entire site. So everything on ck12.org should be allowed. So we do site lock and you can see that it opens the uh, to that site, but almost all of the data is missing. Um, sometimes you'll get uh, like a main menu, but it will only be in text or, or things won't be formatted properly. Everything will be uh, crammed up along the left or columns will be missing or just graphics will be missing all over the site. So the reason this happens is because when we tell Chrome to not allow any sites except ck12.org and the browser brings this site up, some sites are designed so that they pull lots of resources in from other sites that are not on the same domain. So we use the term dependencies for those sites. It means that this main website is dependent upon other websites or resources that are on other URLs in order for this page to, uh, to look proper or to work properly. So it's not going to work for site lock without creating those dependencies. And we have a way to do that. When you look at web links, if we take ck12.org, we have this tab called dependencies where we can list the URLs of the other sites that, that this site needs access to in order to display properly. So this is beyond something that a teacher would normally do. So this would be something they would report back to you. And either you can help find the dependencies and create them for the, for the teacher, um, or you can um, request that we do that and uh, you just put in a, a support ticket or contact us and um, we'll find the dependencies and create the link for you. But if you want to do it on your own, here's how to do it. So let's, um, I'm going to open a new tab in Chrome and I'm going to go to ck12.org. And I don't think you can see the menu here, so let me slide this down. And while this site is open, let's slide this out of the way. If we go to Chrome's developer tools, normally it opens up to this first tab, Elements. But if you switch over to Sources, this list shows all the different sites that are being accessed while I'm on this page. And so these are the sites that we want to start adding to our dependencies list. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean you'll have to add all of them, but there are certain ones that you'll, you'll recognize that you're not going to need. If you see things um, you know, that are very obviously looking at an ad net, ads network, you don't need to add that. Usually you don't need to add ones dealing with like um, Google Analytics or AdWords or things like that. Um, one common type of website you'll find is um, called a CDN or a content delivery network. So anytime you see something that starts with CDM, that's just a way that the vendor uh, that created the app that you're using or that website, um, they, can, they can store resources on a CDN, which are distributed all over the world for faster access to certain elements on their website. So CDNs are, are, should always be um, safe to add on that. You'll also see some common ones if they use anything with Google. You, you'll very often see gstatic.com and googlefonts.com somewhere and Google APIs, like here's maps.googleapis.com. There's fonts.googleapis. So it's, it's always safe to add those. You do want to be careful about something like just adding them all blindly because you can see here they're using google.com and you probably don't want to just add google.com because now that the student's site locked to this site, if you add google.com as a dependency, then 
they'll be able to get to Google and view images and everything else that, that you can do on Google as a whole. So kind of be, be, uh, be cautious with it. Add the ones that look very obvious to you. Then if it doesn't work, you can experiment with adding a, adding a few more. So that's how you can create, um, create those dependencies. Um, but that's, pro that's only going to work for the one web link that you create it for. The advantage of asking us to do it is that if it is a common site, and ck12.org is a, a common site, we can create it in what we call a predefined web link. So I'm going to delete the one that we just created here. So let's put ourselves back in the shoes of the teacher. Now, when the teacher hits create, instead of typing in ck12.org and putting in the URL here and then trying to add those dependency websites, we have this button, Use Predefined Web Link. So these are ones that we've um, done for other districts or schools that were generic enough or useful enough for other schools to add to this list for everybody. So obviously, if it's a site that's very specific to your you know, location, um, you know, that wouldn't have wide appeal, we're, we're not going to add it to the master list. But most of the time, these things can be added. So now, as the teacher, or you can do it for them, if we use ck12.org, you'll see immediately it says this link has dependencies. And you can either click the dependencies here or on the tab here, and you can see we've already filled those out. So you can see there's the Google APIs, there's CloudFront, um, there's the, uh, the, the CDN. So those are ready to go. So now we have that dependency filled in. Now the other ways are predefined web link. And you'll see that when we add it, it has the D with the circle on it. So that means it's a site with dependencies. Now sometimes the site that you're going to add is a specific web page on the site. Um, so it might be a lesson deep within the site, and that's what the teachers want to lock to. So that's fine. In, in a case like that, when they hit create and use predefined web link, um, something like Kahoot is a, is a good example, or even Nearpod. So they might want to go to a specific Kahoot, uh, uh, maybe a specific Nearpod presentation. So when we add that, you'll notice that we, we put a note here in the description to add the, add the pin and, uh, to the URL and edit the file name. So that means that the dependencies are all there, but if they're trying to push a specific presentation, and those presentations on Nearpod all have a, a, a pin on them, then they can put, put that in here. Sometimes it's a matter of changing the whole URL. For example, if this were a quiz that is being delivered on uh, through the Canvas LMS, then um, you would, the teacher would paste their URL in here as the main URL. So they're really not using the URL we've predefined. They're using the predefined web link for the purpose of having all those dependencies there. And they'll just replace it with their own URL. Um, we did something similar to this with, um, with a YouTube. Uh, YouTube video. So on the YouTube video, we put a description in here for them of replace the video number at the end with your own. So the teacher can, can they could paste their whole entire URL of the video they want, or they could come and put the, the number, uh, just the video number that they want copied off of the, off of the YouTube site. So in a case like this, let's say they wanted this math video, they could just copy the video number here and replace it for the video number here. And then instead of naming this YouTube video, they would probably want to name it uh, whatever the name of the video itself is here, or just put their own description. Now they have a YouTube video added um, that can easily, that, that has all the dependencies there and, and should work um, with the site lock feature. Another handy feature when, when working with this uh, issue where you need sites with dependencies but they may want to do a specific page is to make use of this clone feature. So if we take something like this, you know, math videos here, this might be a good one um, that we would just clone it and then we can change the URL to whichever specific page we need on there. This would actually be the most useful thing if you were to create your own web link for the teacher because you came in and found the dependencies and you created it but you know other teachers are going to need it and they need to make it page specific um, whether you're doing it or they're doing it that's a good example where you would use that clone feature and then just make a change to the main URL just the page portion of the URL um, that way you're not having to recreate uh, by putting all these um, by putting the dependencies in there one more note about creating dependencies if you do it yourself is make good use of wildcards. For instance, you'll see here that there, there's more than one use of, uh, or more than one that's coming from CloudFront, um, but they all end with cloudfront.net. 
So if we were doing this one ourselves, and let's say, well, we can just look at the ones that are already here for ck12.org. You can see that the, the dependency is asterisk or the wildcard.cloudfront.net. That saves from having to put all the individual ones in. And chances are those are going to have a different time that page comes up. It might have a different prefix or you know, lower level to it anyhow. So um, you know, make good use of it. Just be careful. Again, you don't want to do things like star.google.com. Um, you know, the Google APIs would be safe, but you wouldn't want to use Google.com. Um, but uh, use that what you make could use the wildcard, and it can keep your list shorter as you're looking through the URLs here. And if you just look at the example that we have here, there, there's a couple little odd things. Like you'll see this webpack colon slash slash. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everything in this list has to be added. You'll notice we don't have anything in uh, with webpack for the uh, in the dependencies list here. But again, feel free to have us create this for you. Send us the, the URL. The only trick if you're sending it to us is if it is into a product for which you have a subscription and there are certain pages within there, um, you're going to have to send us like a dummy student ID and password, something so that we can access it and be able to examine this list. We actually have some back-end tools where we're doing more than just looking at it through Google. We're actually looking at the traffic on the back-end as well. Um, occasionally it helps to dig in a little bit deeper on these, but usually when you're doing it, usually just the root here is all you need. Um, but you still may not be totally successful. We may need to look into it, and we might need an ID and a password to the resource.